Hey everyone, it's Brandon from AGL, and uh, today we're going to shoot some more video on our scratch build series. You saw the other day uh, our previous video where Kevin built this high wing trainer out of foam and a couple servos and a lot of hot glue. Today we're going to work on a 45 inch Edge 540 profile plane. Uh, it's going to be just really as, as deep docile to fly as the uh, Cessna was. And uh, you'll see right here we've got pretty much all the parts we need to build it. We've got our foam board, our templates hot glue, razor knives, a straight edge ruler, and uh, in just a moment we're going to start cutting out our templates and we're going to trace them out on the foam and start building this airplane. Alright everyone, you can see we've cut out our templates and we're going to use these to trace out onto the foam board all the parts that we need to cut. And it looks like we're just going to have to use three sheets of foam board. Okay, so we've got our general shapes traced out on the foam board, and one little tip that we uh, didn't bring up earlier is that uh, you can use the paper to trace it out like I did this time, or if you wanted to, you could mark two spots and use a straight edge to make a very nice clean line. Um, or if you use the paper, you can come back with a, a straight edge ruler or whatnot, yardstick, and just clean up your lines. So the next thing we're going to do is cut this out of the foam. Okay guys, we've got all of our parts cut out. Here's our right wing, right to you. And we've gone ahead and marked this line as the cut we're going to make for the aerolon. And it's not going to be all the way through the foam like we're going to cut out a piece. We're going to cut just a shallow cut through here, fold it over, and then make a 45 degree bevel cut to make our hinge. Now if we go a little too deep and go through the, the uh, foam and the paper backing, we can just go on the back side of this and put a strip of uh, extreme tape or whatnot to uh, shore up that, that hinge. Alright, I must admit I'm not very good at doing a shallow cut, so I did go through the paper on both of these aerolons. Woe is me, right? So we're just going to put some tape on there, and after we put the tape on, we are going to glue the wings together. The one thing we want to do, we didn't speak about a moment ago, make sure 
that you cut out this little notch on the plans um, if you use these plans. That way the fuselage will have space. It has, it's a relief for the fuselage so the wings will actually go together. Next we're going to put a piece of tape across the top seam. And we'll trim the excess with a razor knife. We want to take special care not to get glue into that relief. Next, we're going to install a thin diameter carbon fiber rod at the bottom of the wing to give it strength. Alright, now what we're going to do is we've marked off two inch uh, little markings, two inches from the leading edge. And we're just going to draw a line from end to end. I also marked off where the carbon fiber rod ends on both sides, evened it out. So we're going to go from this spot, just line up your ruler, your straight edge, whatever you're using. We're just going to make a nice straight mark. And continue it on the other side. Just keep in mind it doesn't have to be perfect because Lord knows I'm not perfect at doing this. Stop just a tick. That's okay. Also, when you're making your cut, your cut is going to get rid of some of this foam that's got the pen lines on it, so that'll be not a problem. We're going to make a channel running along this seam, this line, basically a 45 degree channel. Cut one, one 45 degree, then the other, then pull out the foam. Okay, now we're going to prepare to put the CF rod on the bottom of the wing. What we did is we measured two inches from the leading edge all the way across and just drew a line. And to get this rod to fit, we have to basically bevel out a channel. You make two 45 degree cuts and then remove the foam out of that cut. Again, I'll apologize in advance because I'm not very good at cutting this foam precisely, but we'll make do.
So after making our bevel cut, we pressed in our CF rod just to get a good fit. And we had our glue gun on high, very hot glue into the channel. Then quickly press the uh, CF rod into the channel. And that is the long and the short of installing a CF rod into our airframe. Next, just to cover up the, uh, the rod, just put a piece of tape over it. Keep it nice and smooth in the airstream. Alright, next, we're going to be talking about the elevator, the horizontal section of the fuselage. And you see we made a cut right here. It's a little confusing, I'm sure, but uh, unfortunately this section of the air, airplane was a little too big for our um, foam board sheets, our paper back sheets. So we made a, a, a slotted cut so we could key it back into itself, and we're just going to hot glue this together. and then put some reinforcing tape on top of it. After that, we're going to make a little more relief so the elevator will attach to the tail properly and have a, a little bit of a gap so it'll, it'll function properly. And we're going to put the beveled edges so it'll properly move up and down. Now we've got our bottom of the elevator and the tail beveled. Just sand them a little bit if you need to. And what we're going to do is because we're this is a very weak point, it's a very thin section of foam. So what we're going to do today is just give it a little extra strength. Ye old popsicle trick. It works just fine. Simply glue it on, and you're done with that. Just be careful not to burn yourself with the hot, hot glue. Press it on, and it'll dry in moments. Next, flip the aircraft over, or what's going to be an aircraft. You see we've got our relief built in now, so we won't bind up here and here. And we're just going to put a piece of tape across. After we put the tape across, we're going to make cuts here again so it won't bind. Okay, now we have a functioning hinge that's got a little bit of extra strength for it. All right, now we're going to talk about the vertical tail and the rudder to get proper movement. We're going to have to put another bevel in. Not a problem. We're just going to bevel the rudder and the vertical tail. Okay, now that we've got our bevel, we can line them up. We want to make sure that when we do tape this together, we want to build in a little relief so it doesn't bind right here at the top of the tail.
So now we have a hinge on our tail to our rudder. Okay. Now we've got our rudder attached. You want to make sure that you test fit your fuselage halves together before you glue them. Because once you put the glue down, you are stuck. What we did find is that we had to cut out just a little more relief right here to get the elevator to have its proper clearance. Not a big deal, only took a second. And after we did that, our test fit was perfect. And the next thing we're gonna do, or the next thing we did, was we made a 90 degree angle so that when we put glue down on the fuselage, we can line this up and make sure that we are straight up and down. So we don't want there, the fuselage to be cocked over to one side. If you're happy with this being straight up and down, run a bit of glue right down the sides to give it some more strength. Looks like we're halfway there. It's almost looking like an airplane. All right, now we're gonna talk about fitting the wing on the lower half of the fuselage. One other thing I wanna mention is that we added a couple more strips of the extreme tape to the bottom of the wing just to give it some more strength, especially on that, you know, when you're doing a pull up, the wing's gonna flex. And we had a little more flex than we wanted, so we had a little bit of tape on there. But, as with all of these parts, you want to do a dry fit. The wing slots in here and keys in here on this little piece of relief right here that we showed you earlier. Just to test it out. Just right. The relief is just right, and all we're going to do is roll it over, make sure we're right down the middle. We know we are here because it's keyed in, and we're going to use that nice hot, hot glue again. with other projects, a little piece of scrap glue to get that excess glue inside all your cracks and things like that. rest momentarily keeping an eye on your angles make sure it's at 90 degrees that dry for just a moment and we're going to move on to attaching the lower fuselage and the wing to the upper fuselage and tail. Where the fuck did that go? Next we're going to attach our two halves of the fuselage assembly, the lower half and the upper half. 
And we're going to do a test fitting just like always. That fits just like that. And we'll roll it over. And you'll see that these will key in here. And that's, that's our airplane. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it back apart. We're going to put glue on certain areas. You'll see that we marked right here. And on the wing, we're going to just put a layer of glue here because this is going to be a nice big area and give us a lot of strength. So we're going to add our glue, put the fuselage halves together, and then we're going to talk about some other little points and places that need to be uh, attached. Okay, you don't want to take your time with doing that because you've got a lot of area and the glue will dry quickly even if you've got it on its hot setting. So now that we've got this attached, and you want to also make sure this is nice and level, 90 degrees, which I think we've done a pretty good job of that. We're also going to run, run a bead of glue down each side on these areas that don't have a lot of glue. Got a nice bead of glue down both sides. It fills in any cracks we have or gaps in the foam. We also put a little bit of bead of glue here to fill in those gaps, give it that little bit uh, extra strength that we want. There's two other places we're going to have to glue. We left this loose. We wanted this to be the last thing. We're going to push this over, put a bead of glue, push them together, and then we're going to use that scrap piece and smooth out the glue. All right, something else we've seen is this gap here just to give even more strength we're going to put a little bit of glue here and on the other side because when we were putting that flat layer down uh, since it was thinner it started to dry a little bit faster and it had a little bit of a gap I don't doubt that it's on there very well but we're still gonna fill it And the last thing we want to take care of is this here where the rudder meets the bottom of the fuselage. We're going to put some glue here and then we're going to tape both sides of it to give it even more strength. If you want
want to, you can put a strip of tape here. But we can see this is holding really well, so I'm not that worried about it. An additional benefit of having this here is it's kind of a tail skid. It's not a skid necessarily, but it's going to keep it a little more pr protected, especially if you come in dragging the tail. Next, we're going to be moving on to electronics and hardware installation. Okay, so you've seen us put together the fuselage. Now we've got an airplane except for the electronics and hardware. For this build, we uh, used bits that we got from Hobby King instead of the local hobby shop because that's part of this comparison. And uh, we've got Corona 939s, or excuse me, 929 servos metal gear. A Turnergy 2836 1100 kV motor. We've got our control horns, propeller, we've got a, a 30 amp ESC, and we ordered a Futaba Orange RX. And uh, for the same price uh, as the hobby shop item, this one actually has a built in 3 axis gyro. So we're going to talk about using a single servo for the airlock. And what we've done, we're gonna cut out this slot right here and recess the servo just a little bit so we can have the single servo operating both sides. And that's what we're gonna do next. So first you need to remember to put the servo arm on the servo before you do this, otherwise it's gonna be very difficult to mount later. put your servo arm on, you want to make sure that your servo is centered. So we've got this servo tester and centering device and you can choose manual, neutral or auto and we want to go neutral. So while it's in this position we can put the servo arm on and make sure it's centered. Our servo looks like it's operating properly, so we are confident that we won't have any problems with it, uh, so we can go ahead and install it. And it's always a good idea to, to check the operation of this thing before you install it, because this mounting location is going to be a little difficult to get a bad servo out of if you haven't tested it before you mount it. So we'll begin cutting, we made some, some marks, and you have to be a little careful because you don't want to cut too deep, you want it to be slightly recessed so it has some strength, and uh, you don't want to make the, the marks too wide. So you just make a mark on either side and trim, just be mindful that the uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to trim because there's hot glue there, but you make sure you've got a, a nice sharp blade and it shouldn't give you too much trouble. Okay, you can see we made a pretty good relief cut. I don't know if that's going to mess up the camera or not, but above and below the wing. And what I did just for this little, little extra reassurance, I put a piece of tape right here because this is a fairly weak seam in my opinion and just cut out around it. So now we can mount our servo. Pull the 
wire through. Make it a little bit easier to turn the servo arm to the side. And all we have to do is glue it in. And we'll have our control rods and arms run out to the wing. All right, so now we've had time for our glue gun to heat up. We are going to secure this servo in its new home. And we've got the glue gun on high. Just gonna run a bead on both sides. Make sure it's reasonably straight. Let that cool for a moment. And we're gonna tack the bottom as well. straightened up and let it dry for a moment before we move on to lining up our servo rods and control horns. All right, now we want to look at how to measure and place our control horns and we're going to use the control rods basically as a guide rod to figure out where to put it. So just install your control rod. And just like with other builds, when you're using control horns, you want the pivot point to be right over the edge. So we'll mark that in a moment. And one way we can do that is simply by either poking a hole with this or use your X-Acto. Be very careful not to stick yourself. Or you can use a pen. We can do the same for the other side. And now that we've got that marked, we can go ahead and install these. And when we're done installing them, we're not going to tighten them down just yet. We're going to wait until we power up the aircraft. But we will cut away the excess rod after that. All right. So now we have our control rods control horns installed. You see this is a two-piece affair. And we're going to keep them loose until we're ready to power up the electronics and get, make sure everything's centered. So next we're going to go to the tail. The tail is going to be a little bit different. We're actually going to let the length of the control rod determine where we place our servos. We're going to place both, both of the servos on the bottom of the fuselage. But what we're going to do is mount this first and then use that to determine where we put the servo. Okay, so you can see we mounted our control arm and we measured out since we have a little extra length on this, we're going to keep a little extra length just in case we fudge it up a little bit. We measured out and marked a spot to cut into the fuselage to mount our elevator servo. We went ahead and mounted the servo arm uh, after 
making sure it's centered using our servo tester. Now we're going to cut this out, mount that servo, and move on to the rudder servo. Okay, now we're going to take a look here. I think we got the length just right when we're going to cut off just a little bit of this excess, but I just tighten it now just for show. We're going to loosen this. Obviously, we're going to tighten it all back up when we uh, power up the aircraft with the ESC and all the other electronics installed. But we've got a nice fit and it looks good. We're going to glue that in in just a moment and move on to the rudder servo. That's wet. And now we're going to start with the rudder side. Okay, and now we have both our rudder and our elevator servos installed with all their hardware. All we have to do is plug them in uh, with the rest of the electronics, the ESC and the receiver and the motor, and we're almost there. All right, the next thing we're doing is installing the firewall and the motor. And what we're going to do is we already marked the firewall. We're going to install the motor onto the firewall and then install the firewall onto the, the front of the aircraft. And we also went ahead and just kind of pre-tapped pre these holes so the wood does not split when you uh, use your screws. Now the screws that we're using, you're probably going to have a whole lot of them on hand if you do any kind of building or any kind of model aircraft flying. But the, uh, the servo packs usually get have these extra screws and it's basically just a little small wood screw. It is perfect for mounting motors onto these wooden firewalls. So we're going to do that real quick. We're going to speed this up. And uh, when we get this mounted on, we'll tell you some other little tips. Okay, so we've dry fit the firewall onto the airframe. Uh, a couple little tips. We are, since there's a gap here, we're going to backfill this with glue for extra strength. Also, it's a good idea to put a drop of hot glue on these screws just to help make sure they don't back out. And if you remember from the, the beginning of this video, the plans come with a template for this. We just used quarter inch wood from the hobby shop, a Dremel to make the, the notches, and that's it. So let's get some glue on this and get it situated. Okay, you can see we've used plenty of glue, and since we're using the hot glue on its highest setting, we uh, have to make a couple passes because the glue likes to run a little bit. 
One thing to watch out for, your thrust angle. Make sure that uh, the motor is not too far out of alignment. Make sure it's, your thrust angle is good because if it's not, then your airplane is not going to fly very well. It'll fly, but you won't be happy with its performance. Okay, now we've got our electronics mocked up. We used six inch extensions so we would reach our receiver. The ESC's got plenty of length on, on this particular one's uh, control wire, so it's not a problem. We're going to try to keep the ESC as far forward as possible. Since we have these servos way in the back, uh, we want to try to keep make sure the CG is going to be okay. So we're going to keep the ESC forward near the firewall. For right now, we're not. We're just attaching these for show. We have to make sure that we have our motor rotation correct. And after we do that, we'll actually cinch them down uh, and hot glue them down. Same thing with the ESC itself. Now this particular receiver is a Spectrum. I know at the beginning of the video we said it was a, um, we were going to use the Futaba. For right now, we're uh, just demonstrating this with a Spectrum, but we're, we're probably going to, on the programming video for this airplane, we'll probably do both. Uh, it won't take very long uh, to do both Spectrum and, and Futaba for this airplane. Uh, let's see. So what we're going to do, I went ahead and ran this servo's wire through the fuselage, made a very small hole and then attach the six inch extension. It's got plenty of length for all these to make a, a good connection. Nothing's binding. And to keep this wire away from the servo horn, we're just gonna put a little bit of glue here and tack it down. And then run the wire the rest of the way. And it's as simple as that. That's pretty much the entire build. We'll do the same thing with this wire. We'll tack this wire down. A couple things you may do differently, if you want to, if your servos, if you don't want to use extensions and you have your servos way up here, you can use longer rods. However, keep in mind if you use a longer rod, you're going to have flex and slop, and you're not going to have the same crisp control responses that you would if you use a short rod like this. And uh, other than that, the other, only other things we have to do, we're using a prop saver. So when we do a belly landing, the prop will bend instead of break, because if you used a regular um, prop adapter, if you came in like this and hit the prop, you risk either breaking the prop itself or tearing the firewall out of the aircraft. And that's just a pain, it's more repair time, and we don't want that. So that's our, our build in a nutshell. All we have left to do is find our CG point. So to get back to it, we are gonna keep our CG point right about here, use your battery, to find your CG point. And then uh, the one one tip we were gonna say, Kevin pointed out a, uh, a little safety issue you might come across. We have this wood screw sticking out of the back of the firewall. What you don't want is for your battery to be Velcroed here and then a hard landing come forward and, and have that screw penetrate the battery and destroy it, catch the plane on fire, etc. So just be wary of that. You can either trim that down or um, Put something right here, wherever, if you match your battery on either side, to protect that, just in case. So uh, we want to say thanks for watching our video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please put them at the bottom uh, in the comment section. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please share it. And we want to say thanks again for watching. Okay, so, so far we've cut out our templates and we're going to use these to trace onto the cardboard and then we're going to cut out the cardboard to make all the parts that we need. Okay, we've got our shapes traced out on the foam board and uh, one little trip or tip. Cardboard. I know. <laughs> cardboard? I didn't say cardboard. I'm glad you weren't recording.